Do you need errors and emissions insurance, general liability insurance, drone insurance, or even cyber liability coverage? Then let me tell you about our sponsor, Claim Professionals Liability Insurance Company, or CPLIC. Founded 16 years ago by independent adjusters for independent adjusters, CPLIC offers products to give you peace of mind while you help your insureds get back on their feet. Apply for coverage now at CPLIC.net. If you run hail claims for more than a week, chances are you're gonna have to start pulling siding samples for ITEL. And you're definitely gonna need to check roofing layers and shingle warranty with a shingle gauge. If only there was one tool that could do all of that. Wait, what's this? You're watching The Property IA Show. Hey, Matt here with The Property IA Show on Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe to Adjuster TV here on YouTube. Click the bell notification so that you never miss a video. Hit the like button. Even if you don't like this video, I think you'll be surprised by how good it makes you feel. Adjuster TV is the premier video resource for the independent adjusting community, and we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about, if it's right for you, and how to build a rewarding career in claims, a career where you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living. Okay, if you're new to claims, you might be wondering why adjusters would wanna tear siding off of people's houses. The simple answer is this. In many states and on most insurance policies, an insured is owed a reasonable uniform appearance. So if you find hail or wind damage to one side of the house, generally speaking, you'll be paying for that entire elevation or that entire side, right? It only makes sense. Things that live outside all the time will start to weather and fade from the moment they're installed on a house. And that fading will occur at different rates depending on which compass direction the side of the house is facing. For example, siding on the north side of a house will weather and fade a lot slower than siding on the south side of the house because of more sun on the south side of the house. And remember this because this will become a factor here in just a moment. So because storms usually come in from the southwest in most places, and because southward facing elevations will get sun faded pretty quickly, even if that siding is only a year old and is still available to buy, a new piece of that same sky blue siding will be darker than what's on the house. Makes sense? It will be instantly noticeable to anybody who looking at that side of the house if you only pay to replace just the pieces that were damaged. So this is what we're talking about when we say a reasonable uniform appearance. And it's also why most of the time, even if you find one hole in the siding on one side of the house, you're probably gonna be allowed to replace that entire side of siding corner to corner, that whole elevation, okay? Because let's be honest, nobody wants patchwork siding. This concept of reasonable uniform appearance can spill over to other elevations as well. And it is often argued if the right side of the house is damaged and needs to be replaced, and the front side is also plainly visible when looking at the right side of the house, that the front should be replaced as well. The only problem with that argument is that the siding on the front and right sides of the house probably don't match now anyway. Remember when we talked about siding fading at different rates depending on which compass direction each side of the house faces? Say that the right side of the house gets a ton of sun every afternoon, it's, it's facing west. And the front side of the house, the side that faces to the north, never gets any. I will wager that if you pulled a piece of siding off of the right side of the house and held it up against the front side of the house, which is the north facing side, not the west, but the north, that piece from the right is gonna be a lot lighter than what's already on the house on that front side. Also, consider that when you're looking at the house from the front and you can see the right or left side of the house from the front, that the light that falls on the house is gonna be different on those two sides. One will almost always be in shadow, while the other one is in sunlight. Does that make sense? Therefore, as long as the same profile, general color, and pattern are still available in that siding material, it's gonna be rare that you will pay for the front elevation if the right side was damaged and they're both visible. It would have to be some kind of special circumstance and your manager and the carrier manager will likely be involved. You won't be making that call. So please do not be running around paying for undamaged elevations if the siding is still available or there's a reasonable match. Of course, all of that goes right out the window if there's no reasonable match for that siding on the right side of the house. And when I say reasonable, here's what I mean. 
the replacement sighting is either an exact match or it's so close that it's impossible to tell the difference without getting right up on it and looking at them side by side. Sighting availability is, is a bit more complex than just having a sighting rep or a contractor say, nope, that's a certain T such and such D5 Dutch lap with wood grain pattern. I know for a fact, I don't make that anymore. They stopped back in aught 17. And that may be true. In fact, probably is true. Sighting manufacturers often retire styles and colors, but that doesn't mean that the exact match isn't still easily available or that a reasonable match that's so close as to be almost indistinguishable isn't also available. So how does this work? A local or regional supplier may still have enough inventory of that discontinued sighting hiding in the back of their warehouse that the one side of the house can, that was damaged can be replaced with what they have on hand in stock. Or the siding company may have sold that particular pattern, profile, and color to another manufacturer who's got tons of it, just under a different brand and model name. And again, the color and profile are still available by the same or another manufacturers, and the wood grain pattern on that siding is very similar to what the insured has on their house. So the color and the profile, we'll say, are still available by the same or another manufacturer, and the wood grain pattern on the siding is very similar if it's not an exact match to what the insured already has on their house. So if it's not a perfectly exact match, but it's so close as to be nearly indistinguishable, you'd have to get right up on it and look at it for 10 minutes before you can pick out the differences. And of course, yes, the insured will know that it's not exactly the same, but it's kind of like knowing that you didn't paint behind the refrigerator. The insured is the only one who will know. It won't affect resale value and likely nobody will ever know except for the insured. Okay, makes sense, right? But how does an adjuster even figure this out? Surely we're not supposed to hunt around in the dark corners of local building supply places to see if siding is available or not, right? So that's where this tool comes into play. We have this really amazing resource in the insurance building restoration industry called ITEL, or the Independent Testing Evaluation Laboratory. They can take almost any finished surface material and tell you exactly what it is, who made it, and if it's still available, including if another manufacturer still makes it or what a very close reasonable match is. Also, where we can get it and in what quantity. The report you get back from ITEL will have the name, address, and phone number of a local supplier, along with how many squares or square feet of the siding, carpeting, roofing, whatever it is, they currently have in stock. And it's a bit of a lifesaver. Most of the time, we have to take a piece of siding, or again, carpet or roofing, about 10 to 12, 10 to 12 inches at long, and overnight it to ITEL. We usually get, and we'll usually get a response back in about 72 hours from the time we send it. Which means that we have to wrestle a piece of the siding off of the house. Always the damaged side of the house. Never under any circumstances will you take siding or roofing or carpet from an undamaged area. Why? Because if you do that, then you just damage that area rumor side of the house. And now it's gotta be in the estimate. Don't do it. So the best way to get the siding off of the house is to either pop it off with your hands and cut up the side of the piece that you want with airplane snips and just rip it off. Or you can use a tool like this that's only job is to pop up underneath siding, pull it out so that you can cut the piece out, right? Only problem with this thing is, is that this is the only thing that it does. And secondly, it's not really great at the one job that it does have. But the guys over at bullybag.com have come up with a pretty slick solution to these two problems. I give you the sidebar. It's made with high strength forged steel. It features a protective, durable enamel finish that resists rust and corrosion. It's got a large nail head remover for roofing and siding nail heads. It's big enough to check under shingles and verify roof layers. It's easy to use with your shingle gauge so that you're not tearing up well sealed shingles trying to get your gauge in there. And the things that I really like about this tool and what I look for in any tool is that it's big enough to get the job done, but it's not too big. My regular flat bar is a lot bigger than this, and it's, this is also a multitasker, right? So the only place in my work where multitasking is, is allowed is with tools. So where a side swiper only pulls siding and a flat bar only lifts shingles, the sidebar does both of those things in a form factor that fits easily inside of any tool belt. It's one small tool that rules. In fact, it's even got a place to connect a tether so that you don't leave it on a roof or in the grass on the side of an insured's house. Remember, anything that you set down, you're gonna lose at least once. Now, if we could only get a magnet that had a tether on it. I can't tell you the number of magnets I've left stuck to siding or gutters across this great country of ours. You can get your very own sidebar along with all kinds of innovative and useful tools at 
bullybag.com. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials and webinars, the best gear and software for claims, and industry news and IA weather reports, head on over to adjustertv.com. And if you like this video, you can help us create more videos just like this by liking, sharing, and subscribing. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. I'm going fishing now.